Hi there, and welcome to the fifth installment of the Brigport Dagger development log. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a deeper dive into my AI system currently developed for the project. So since the last log, I've redeveloped the AI system to better fit my learning objectives from this project, as well as making movement and navigation more appropriate for a ship. We can see the AI behavior for patrolling, detecting, chasing, and attacking the player, losing and searching for the player, as well as returning to their patrol, are all still intact. However, how they function has been drastically altered. Opening up the enemy blueprint, we can see how all of these systems function within the same blueprint. Developing this AI has been a significant step in my progress learning blueprints, as I've moved away from reliance on the event tick to focus on the use of efficient custom events. As we can see, the event tick is not even used. So you can just go ahead and delete that there. The enemy now navigates without the use of Unreal's AI features, with forward motion being applied to the enemy when it is not located at the target destination, and rotation applied only when moving to steer it in the right direction. It would be possible with this system for the enemy AI to get stuck looping around its target. However, the blueprint will detect when this might be happening and it will straighten the ship out to come back again at a better angle. Thanks to the open ocean level design, navigation can remain quite simple. However, there is still plenty of room to add collision avoidance using raycasts in the future. A repeating AI behavior selector code allows for the AI to, in theory, switch between any of its states at any time. Although in practice, some switches will not currently occur, such as going from patrolling to searching. Thanks to the flexibility of its design, however, this could be changed in the future to allow for enemies to investigate directly from the patrolling state in response to sounds, for example. The default state for the AI is still the patrol state. And we can see that this works in much the same way as before, with waypoints which can be placed in the game world by the level designer, as well as an integer which tracks the enemy's current position and next step on their patrol. Player detection has been reworked to no longer require the Unreal AI suite as well. Instead, a distance to player measure is used, which can be illustrated using a simple debug tool I've developed. With the tool enabled, we can see three circles around the enemy, one blue, one orange, and one red, decreasing in size respectively, as well as seeing the enemy's current detection condition through the changing color of the sphere above them. The outer blue circle marks the distance at which AI perception check speeds up. Outside of this circle, the perception check is slow, as there is no chance of the player being detected without directly interacting with the enemy in some way, such as attacking them. This is the first in a series of planned optimization steps introduced to improve game performance, as enemies will steadily carry out fewer of their functions the further away they are from the player. Once the player is inside the blue circle, the enemy is still unaware of their presence. However, the delay between perception checks is decreased considerably so as to be more responsive. The orange circle represents the area in which the enemy has a chance to detect the player, with a value generated each check which will determine whether the player is detected or not. 
the value is increased the closer the player is to the enemy meaning the closer the player gets and the longer they stay in the orange circle the higher the probability of being detected once detected the orange circle is also the distance the player must be to escape from detection which will be covered in more detail later in the video the red circle is the range at which the player is automatically detected by the enemy and this ensures that the AR feels both responsive and believable as a ship full of people looking in all directions and not just an individual only looking in one. The radii of these three circles are determined by a single perception integer with a higher perception value leading to a larger perception radius. Normally, this would be a fixed value that can only be edited in the Unreal Editor. However, using the debug, we can press these buttons here to raise and lower perception to see how this relationship works. As we can see, the higher the perception value, the larger the perception radius. However, this is not a strictly linear relationship. While the red guaranteed perception circle decreases with the ship's perception, its proportion to the total perception radius actually increases. This function ensures that low perception enemies do not appear totally brain dead, with the possibility of a player being right on top of them without being perceived. Once detected, the enemy behaviour will change depending on a few factors, such as their personality type and whether or not they are hostile. In the future, other deciding factors are planned, such as whether the enemy is afraid of the player, or if the player is considered a potential, but not yet active, threat. But for now, we can see the enemy becoming aware of the player, but continuing their current behaviour, or detecting and then attacking them if they are hostile. When a hostile enemy detects a player, the player's location will be tracked to provide values to aim the hostile's weapons and for navigation. When attacking the player, the enemy will use the player's current location as their target destination for movement, however with a random acceptable radius between half and just below maximum range for their main weapon, as indicated by the large yellow sphere. Once they reach their generated target location, they will carry out a different behaviour depending on which of their weapons is their main weapon. However, these different behaviours are not yet developed, and so for now, they will simply stay there and fire at the player. If the player moves out of range of the enemy's main weapon, they will begin to chase them again. Should the player move beyond the enemy detection radius, they will lose the player and begin to search for them using the player's last known location, speed and direction of travel as well as the speed of the enemy, and by extension the time it will take for them to get to where the player is likely to be, to generate a new target location where the AI believes the player will be found. Once this location is reached, the enemy will generate three more search locations it will move to in turn, which are based on the player's direction of travel when they were lost. Before abandoning the search, and returning to the patrol. So this concludes the current development of the enemy AI. As I said before, this was a big shift from the implementation of AI in the last video, and I hope that this has been illustrated to you here. In the next video, I'll be covering the implementation of different enemy weapon types, as well as differing combat behaviors to suit these new weapons. In the time between videos, I will also be going back into my older blueprints to move them away from the event tick and to consolidate the player and their weapons down to a single blueprint so I can get things as efficient as possible. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.